YouTube, YouTube, you. Tube, what's good? It's your boy Norman, aka the Chop Doc, and we are back once again. This time for me to give you the way that I earn not a partial, not a full tuition, but a full cost of attendance scholarship to medical school. Oh, gee, you ain't gonna wanna miss this one. Look. So if it's your first time rocking with me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you return and just stick around, because I'm about to give you all the tools you need in order to secure that bag. So the main reason that I qualify for my full cost of attendance scholarship is because I had an overall just eye-catching application in my opinion. So I'm gonna give you all the things that I did and how the ways that I've broken it down to make it more digestible for you and a method I've coined the pillars of pre-medicine. Oh, dear Lord. Now, Norman, when you say pillars of pre-medicine, what do you mean? Well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> So the pillars of pre-medicine is everything that you need in order for your application to medical school to be literally perfect. If you follow every guideline I give you, you will have the ideal medical school application. I can't guarantee that you'll get a full cost of a center scholarship, but you'll definitely be able to stand out from the pack and put you in the best chances of doing it. So the first pillar of pre-medicine is your GPA and MCAT. People usually like to put a lot of extra stress on this one because it's the most academic indicator of how qualified you are to go to medical school, but it by no means is the only indicator of whether you'll be a quality medical school candidate. As long as you have a competitive score, that's all that you need in order to check that box off and give yourself the best chances as anybody else's. It's people that get 528s on the MCAT and don't get in because they don't have the other things. And it's people that get 500s but kill the other categories and still make it in. So in my opinion, I would say that the goal range for your MCAT is probably like a 508 plus. You can probably steep down to maybe a 505. But if you want some money, you better make sure them other categories is hitting. For your GPA, as long as your science GPA um, is about a, I would say 3.5 plus, you get a good range to be competitive. Just check that box and move on. Uh, as far as my personal stats, I will not be releasing what my GPA and my MCAT was. I will tell you that they were competitive. Don't put unnecessary weight on it. The second that you cross the competitive threshold, you got just as good a chance of being qualified for a scholarship as somebody with a 528. Just check the box. The next category is research. Now, you don't have to be... Uh, an aspiring PhD, but every aspiring medical student should have some level of research in their background or on their resume. If you don't have it, um, it's very popular to get that experience during the summer. That's what I personally did. I did three research projects. Personally, I did one during my sophomore summer at UCLA doing computational chemistry, basically doing at the um, intersection of computer science and organic chemistry modeling and simulating organic reactions. I also did a psychology research project through Howard. I was a psychology pre-medicine major there, so there were resources and opportunities where I could get experience doing that, took advantage of that. And I also did a neuropharmacology research project in Brazil through a program known as uh, MIRTS, M-H-I-R-T, don't forget it, look it up free study abroad program for uh, minority students where they pay you to go off and do research for an entire summer in various countries. For leadership, as a medical practitioner, you have to be comfortable with being the front man and being the leader of a healthcare team. So you have to be able to show them that you can handle that type of work. People that's familiar with my other videos, such as my Fulbright experience or my Howard University experience video that you can catch the link to right there. People that are familiar with my other videos know that throughout my time at Howard University, I was very heavily involved in STEP. So um, from STEP in my freshman year and then having the opportunity to coach two teams from that year on uh, demonstrates longitudinal leadership experience. And I'm able to tell the experiences that went into doing that and how I was able to bring those people together for their common purpose. For my community service portion, so as a physician, Everything that you do day in and day out is for the patients that you serve. So you have to show that you have an interest in serving. I was also very heavily involved in the residence life Royal Court at Howard. And in 
the royal court position said Howard, you're given the opportunity to get a platform where you can push any initiative that you would like to on campus. I had an educational initiative that I led on campus in addition to doing other community service projects. So I'm able to talk about those experiences and show my commitment to service. As for my clinical experience, I did a program called SMBEP during my freshman year summer. I was able to get a really good shadowing experience through that. Now my clinical experience was kind of lacking because that's the only uh, shadowing experience I had. But I guarantee you as long as you can cite a meaningful case or meaningful experience that you had during that time when you were shadowing, that's about the only thing that'll come up during the interview. Nobody gonna ask you what color scrub the doctor had on on Wednesday, July 4th. Like, it's fine. Even if you only shadow a little bit, that you're very observant and that you take in what you need to take in and reflect on the experience or that you're able to answer questions when you're being asked about it. And the last one is cultural appreciation. So as a doctor, you're not in control of the next patient that walks through your door. So you need to prove to these medical schools that you have, you have a, an appreciation for different cultures and different perspectives and different walks of life. It's popular to do it through study abroad experiences, but in whatever way that you can do it to show that you are comfortable being in uncomfortable situations as pertains to um, people that are different from you, then that is a very, very powerful and critical piece to application. Um, I told you about my research project that I did in Brazil. I also did a study abroad program in Mexico during my time at Howard and also was a U.S. Fulbright Scholar. Once again, videos that you can watch. Please watch the videos. And in my time in South Africa, I was a teacher and also a step team coach and also just had amazing cultural experiences as well that I could talk about throughout my application. What made my application strong was the fact that I could hit all of these different marks. The overall aim of this video, if I could sum it up, in one phrase is to own your experiences. I used to think that there was not strength in my medical school application because I was not doing the typical things on Howard University's campus. I was not the one that was the president of the Health Profession Society. I was not the one that was a SGA president to demonstrate leadership. All my leadership and all my community service and all of my uh, experiences that I named that made me such a wild card applicant came from me pulling those experiences out of things that you seemingly wouldn't think they would be in. So take whatever experiences that you have and dissect them and extract the meaningful nature out of them and reflect that in your application. Nothing that you do during undergraduate goes to waste. If you, was, if you started a art club, you can flip that and say that it was a, that you were working on improving mental health by giving people something constructive to do. Like it's all, it's never about what you do as much as it is how you sell it. And I'll be doing other videos showing you like the wording to use and how to go about actually crafting your application to paint the story as well. Cause you can also have all these experiences, but not be able to put them together in a way that's believable, in a way that's personable and relatable on your application. So the videos that come will help you do all that. You will be a doctor. For whoever needs to hear that, you will be a doctor. Stop comparing yourself to the people around you. Stop thinking that you're not good enough. I was extremely social on campus, but I flipped that social nature and turned it into something that is not commonly seen on the application. Everything that you think that doesn't go together, everything that you think is just all over the place making your application weak are the very things that give it its strength. Believe in your experiences, sell your experiences with confidence, and they will buy it. Thank you all so much for tuning in once again. If there was anything in this video that was remotely helpful to you, give it a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe. I want to hear from you all. Uh, where are you in your journey? How can I help? What videos do you want to see? Uh, I respond to every single comment. I try to be as interactive and as engaging as I can. Got my Instagram down here, email. I'm here to help you. Hope this video got you one step closer to securing that bag. And like I said, I can't guarantee you that you'll get a full scholarship to medical school. But if you follow the advice in this video, I can guarantee you your application will stand out. I'll see y'all next time.